All right, so if you're watching this video, it's very likely that you're planning to move over to the Seattle area, or maybe you're still in the exploratory phases, trying to figure out if you wanna move over here, but either way, you're likely looking to do some research on the surrounding Seattle areas, where you should live, where the best place might be for you. And so in this video, I wanted to go over some of the top suburbs people are moving to. Now, this isn't necessarily a list of my favorite places to live or different reasons. Really, this is a list of where I see the most people moving to when they're coming over this way. We have so many different suburbs surrounding the, the Seattle area. So there are a lot of different choices. And so this is my list of the top 10 suburbs. It seems like most of you are moving to when you're coming over this way. I get a lot of people reaching out to me for my YouTube videos here, looking for some help when they're moving over here, which I love. Um, so this is really based on what I'm seeing people are telling me and what they're doing when they come over here. So let's get into my list here of the top 10 suburbs uh, around the Seattle area. Hey everyone, I'm Bryce Greenleaf. I'm a local real estate agent here in the greater Seattle area. And as you can see, I make videos all about what it's like living over here in Seattle and moving over this way and what you can expect when you're moving to a surrounding Seattle suburb as well. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell so you get notified when my new videos come out. I love helping you guys out and I, I keep getting calls and texts and emails constantly throughout the week with those of you moving over here looking for help, looking to buy a home. So I love helping you guys out. So feel free to reach out to me anytime here. You can call, text, or shoot me an email and I'd be more than happy to shoot you a response, see what I can do to help and kind of hopefully make that transition over here a little bit easier for you. But like I said, today's video, we're going over the top 10 suburbs people are moving to outside of the Seattle area. All right, so let's start with number 10 on the list here. And this is Edmonds, Washington. So Edmonds is about 15 miles just north of Seattle. It's about a 20 minute drive without traffic. And then if you're commuting and have your rush hour times from Edmonds to Seattle, expect, you know, anywhere a half an hour, or maybe a little bit over a half an hour. So Edmonds is really popular for people to move to because of the proximity to Seattle. There's for a lot of different reasons. People that work in Seattle don't necessarily want to move right into Seattle. So Edmonds is one of those suburbs high on the list that people are moving to in terms of proximity if they are working in downtown Seattle because it is just a straight shot up and down I-5 there. Now the median home price in Edmonds is 858,000. Um, and this is of course going up quite a bit, just like every other suburb around here, prices are rising pretty rapidly. Um, but Edmonds is so unique and so great partially because it is right on the Puget Sound. So it is one of the cities on the far west side where you get a lot of great access to the Puget Sound. So whether you're living right in the downtown Edmonds area or you're living a, a little bit further to the east side of Edmonds, you're still gonna be really close to the Puget Sound. So if that's something maybe that you enjoy going down to the beach, taking the ferry over, going kayaking. There's so many different things that you can do when you're really close to the Puget Sound. There are great restaurants down there. The downtown Edmonds area specifically is super walkable. So if you just uh, if you live close, you might be able to walk down there. If you live in, a, in another part of Edmonds or really anywhere in the greater Seattle area, I personally, I don't live in Edmonds, but I still go down there every once in a while just to visit. Um, once you're down there, it is very walkable. There's a lot of different shops. There's frozen yogurt, ice cream places. There's a ton of restaurants. You're right on the Puget Sound, so there is some great seafood down there. Anthony's Home Port is my personal favorite. It's right on the water. Um, so there are some great, great places to eat there in Edmonds. You can also take the ferry over from Edmonds to Kingston. If you want to do a little bit of a day trip or just hang out on the Kingston side, get some ice cream, get some food, whatnot. So in terms of, of daily activities, kind of recreation type stuff, things to do, Edmonds is really great because there are so many things to do right along the Puget Sound there. Now, Edmonds is also in a, a, a well-rated school district. It's a school district I grew up in personally, Edmonds School District. Um, so you know, according to niche.com, which I have found to be a very good resource, it's a pretty, pretty well-rated uh, school district. So you can feel confident about that um, when you're moving over that way, if that's something that's a consideration for you. All right, number nine on my list is Bothell, Washington. So Bothell is about 20 miles northeast of Seattle, which is about a 25 minute drive uh, with no traffic. If you're going in heavier rush hour times, you know, closer to 45 minutes is what you can expect. Um, again, it just depends on the day, the weather, if, if there's accidents on the freeway, things like that. But in much heavier traffic times, uh, rush hour times, you could expect closer to 45 minutes. The median home price in Bothell right now is 933,000. So Bothell's extremely, extremely popular for people to move to that are taking jobs on the east side. So when I talk about the east side, I'm talking about Kirkland, Redmond, Bellevue, those cities. Now we've got uh, Facebook and Google, Microsoft headquarters, 
is over here and there's a bunch of companies in Bellevue. So the reason a lot of people move to Bothell outside of one of those cities, Bellevue, Kirkland, or Redmond, if they're taking a job in that city, is because Bothell traditionally has been quite a bit cheaper than those three cities. So people can work close, live by close, but they get a little bit of a break on what they're actually buying, what they're having to spend on that home, getting a little bit more bang for their buck. So Bothell has grown a lot lately. Now the unique thing about Bothell is it is split in half between King County and Snohomish County. So the south side of Bothell is on King County, the north side of Bothell is on Snohomish County. Same thing with the school districts. The south side of Bothell is in North Shore School District, which is a very, very, very highly rated school district over here uh, that draws a lot of people to that city as well. And then the north side of Bothell is in the Everett School District. So uh, Bothell is pretty unique in that fact. Another thing with Bothell, so there's a lot of different types of real estate available. There's tons of condos right along Bothell Everett Highway. That's the main highway that runs through uh, the Bothell area. So there's a lot of condos and townhomes right along that highway that are easy and quick access to the freeway. So if that's something kind of you're shopping for, that could be a great spot for you because it's super convenient. You can just jump right onto Bothell Everett Highway from your condo or townhouse, jump on 405 right there and head down to wherever you need to go if you're working in, in uh, one of the east side suburbs. There are plenty of great uh, single family home neighborhoods in Bothell as well that draw a lot of people over there. All right, suburb number eight on my list is Snohomish, Washington. And this is about 30 miles north uh, northeast of uh, Seattle. So in terms of a commute, it's about a 45 minute drive without traffic. Uh, in rush hour times, you're gonna be over an hour. So this is starting to push that boundary a little bit on people who work in downtown Seattle and, and live all the way out here. That is a bit of a drive. Uh, you could be an hour and 15, sometimes even an hour and a half uh, commute one way uh, in the really bad traffic times. So if you're somebody that's working right in downtown Seattle, you gotta evaluate if that's something that's doable for you, if you're willing to make that sacrifice to live out here in Snohomish. Now, Snohomish is pretty unique because it does have a pretty rural feel to it while also having a really cool downtown area and still being close to everything. So when you head out to Snohomish, like I said, they've got a downtown area with a bunch of shops and restaurants. It's kind of an old town feel, antique kind of a feel. A uh, ton of great restaurants. We're over there all the time eating or walking around, things like that. So a uh, really cool feel there, but also what's unique with uh, Snohomish is the rural feel. So there's a bunch of different uh, farm activities. When I'm talking about farm activities, I'm talking about there's pumpkin patches, there's haunted corn mazes. So these are the fall time activities haunted corn mazes, there's Christmas tree farms, they have wedding venues there, a lot of great wedding venues in Snohomish, that's where we got married, great outdoor venues. So Snohomish is very, very unique in that fact where that's what draws everybody in uh, into the fall time is going to those pumpkin patches and corn mazes and things like that. So super popular for that kind of stuff. Outside of that, if you're somebody that's looking for kind of rural living, you want some more acreage, you want a bigger property, Snohomish should go towards the top of your list, again, depending where you're working and where you're gonna have to commute to. Um, but there are a lot of, uh, you know, acreage properties within Snohomish that could appeal to you. All right, number seven on my list is Lake Stevens. Lake Stevens is right next to Snohomish, just north. So it's 35 miles northeast of Seattle. Um, again, similar to commute to Snohomish, 45-ish without traffic, and then well over an hour in the heavy rush hour time. So Lake Stevens is really nice. Um, you know, it's it's traditionally a little bit more of a smaller town feel, um, and, but that is actually changing quite a bit right now. There are a ton of people moving to Lake Stevens because it is so desirable. In terms of home prices, this is the cheapest on my list of these 10 suburbs. The median home price right now is just over 650,000. Um, so again, cheapest on my list right here. It does draw a lot of people in. It's got a very high, high rated school district according to niche.com, which again, I found to be a great resource for that. Uh, so Lake Stevens, it is on a lake, Lake Stevens, so very popular. It's big enough that you can bring the, the motorboats out and uh, jet skis, things like that. People go kayaking on it. There's places to go swimming. There's lots of parks right around Lake Stevens uh, for the kids to hang out with, you know, jungle gyms and uh, grassy fields to play games and a dock to jump off and, and swimming areas, like I said, things like that. So there are a ton of people moving to Lake Stevens that have been priced out specifically of some of the uh, further south suburbs closer to Seattle and the east side. And a lot of them are going to Lake Stevens because it does offer really clean quality of life, great living there, um, but the, the home prices quite, aren't quite as uh, expensive. 
Now, like I said, it is building quite a bit. Uh, they're building 200, I actually live in Lake Stevens myself, they're building 200 new construction homes just down the street from me to try and meet all the demand here. Those are gonna sell quick, I know that. Uh, they're priced anywhere from uh, the high 600s to the low 800s for those new homes. So uh, those prices are definitely gonna be on the higher end above the medium prices here, but it is new construction, of course. Uh, They're also building a Costco right here in Lake Stevens, um, which is a big deal right now with everybody. So uh, as you can see, it is growing a lot right now. A ton of people are moving over here. All right, so number six on my list is Bellevue. So Bellevue is about 10 miles east of Seattle. It's just directly east on the other side of Lake Washington. So Bellevue is pretty much the epicenter of what we call the east side. The east side is on the, the other side of Lake Washington compared to Seattle. So um, it's the epicenter of that. Bellevue is pretty much the most expensive place to live in the state of Washington. The median home price is $1.5 million. So it is, is very uh, expensive. Now the commute from Seattle to Bellevue it's not terrible uh, because it is so close. You just have to take a bridge over. So there's two ways to get there. On the north side of Bellevue, you can take 520 bridge, which will take you over to the north side of Seattle by the University of Washington, then commute down. If you need to go to downtown Seattle, that is. Um, that is a toll bridge. So you're gonna have to pay to use that every day. Otherwise, you have to go to the south side of Bellevue, take I-90 over, that'll take you to the south side of Seattle, and then commute up if you need to go into the downtown area. So. The commute's not that bad. I mean, 15 minutes without traffic in the in the heavier tra traffic times, of course, those bridges do back up quite a bit. So you're gonna be looking half an hour, sometimes longer to get to and from Bellevue and Seattle. Um, but again, it's not that bad compared to a lot of the suburbs around here. And you know, the reason I say this is just because Seattle is the epicenter of, of kind of this whole subject of moving over here. So a lot of you, these commute times will not even matter because you're not working in Seattle. You might be taking a job somewhere else, but I'm just doing that specifically for the people that are taking a job in Seattle and they're trying to figure out where to live outside of that. Um, but if you're not working right into Seattle, uh, just consider your commute times from Bellevue to wherever you're working. Again, Bellevue's in a very highly rated school district, which is a common theme on uh, this, this list for schools, which is rated by niche.com. Again, found to be a good resource. Um, so. Uh, very popular for people to move to. Now, like I said, it is very expensive. So the, the single family homes median price, like I said, is 1.5. There are a bunch of condos in Bellevue as well. So if you need to move right into Bellevue, but you don't need a big home, maybe it's just you or you and a spouse, a significant other, uh, just a couple people, maybe you could do a condo and you can get something a lot cheaper than 1.5 million. Well, well under a million, you could find a condo. So not a problem at all there. So it could be an option for you if you need to live in Bellevue, but you don't have the finances to, to buy a residential home. All right, number five on my list is Sammamish, Washington. So this is about 20 miles uh, east of Bellevue. Um, again, another popular spot for people to be moving to for various different reasons. But the commute from Seattle to Sammamish is about 30 minutes without traffic and then well over 45 minutes in the heavier traffic uh in the heavier traffic times, close to an hour in bad traffic times. So again, that's on the edge of whether that's commutable for you or not if you're living in uh, Sammamish and working in Seattle. Uh, lake Sammamish, it's right on a lake. So again, there are plenty of things to do there. It's a larger lake. Uh, so you can still, you can take out the motorboats and things like that, the jet skis and whatnot. So uh, plenty to do, plenty of places to go swimming. And if you wanna go fishing and, and kayaking, ca paddle boarding, all that kind of stuff, you can do that right on Lake Sammamish. This is another very expensive area. Median home price is 1.45 million. Um, so it draws in a lot of people, like I said, moving to the east side for jobs. They're taking, you know, good tech jobs is, is a big uh, reason for people coming over here, taking tech jobs on the east side and moving right into Sammamish. It's a beautiful area, Sammamish is. They've got the plateau. There's a newer shopping center out there, a newer Swedish hospital. When I say newer, I mean, it's not brand new, but I believe within the last 10 years. Um, so a lot of great things in Sammamish, a very clean city, uh, just absolutely beautiful to go out there. Uh, beautiful homes with great views of Lake Sammamish. So if that's something you want a water view home, there will be some options for that in Sammamish. All right, number four on my list here is Issaquah, which is right next to Sammamish. It's about 17 miles southeast of uh, Seattle. So again, commute is gonna be similar to Sammamish, uh, 30 minutes without traffic and a little bit over, uh, you know, closer to 45 or so in the heavier traffic traffic times. Medium price in Issaquah is a little bit cheaper than Sammamish. It's still expensive. 1.29 million is the median price. Now, uh, Issaquah has 
a wide variety of different type of homes available. There's some condos and townhomes available. Um, there's some new construction, plenty of new construction available as well. Uh, if you take Issaquah Hobart Road out, you go all the way out snow, uh, to the far side of Issaquah. There's some homes wrapped around up in the mountains, up Tiger Mountain, Cougar Mountain, some great neighborhoods up in there. Um, so plenty of great, great places to live within the Issaquah area. Again, in highly rated school district, as are all the school districts here on the east side. All right, and number three on my list is Redmond, Washington. So Redmond is about 18 miles northeast of Seattle. It's about a 20 minute drive without traffic, closer to 30 plus, 30 to 45 in heavier traffic time. So Redmond is the epicenter of uh, Microsoft. It is where the headquarters of Microsoft are. So there are a ton of people that are moving to Redmond to take jobs there, which of course has made it a very expensive place to live. Mean home price right now in Redmond is 1.37 million. So uh, again, Redmond's really close to Kirkland and Bellevue, all those other east side cities. It's right in the middle there. It's a little bit further east than uh, Kirkland and Bellevue. I've made previous videos on Redmond and what it's like to live there. It is much more of a suburban feel than kind of uh, Kirkland and uh, Bellevue are, uh, which have a little bit more of an urban feel. Um, so Redmond is a great place to go. They still have a, a town center there, Redmond Town Center, with all the shopping and stuff that you need, all your doctor's offices and restaurants and all that kind of stuff is still in Redmond. Plenty to do there, uh, plenty of great places to live. And again, a great school district that it's in. Um, so Redmond is one of the most popular places for people to be moving to because of those jobs, specifically those Microsoft jobs. And there's Facebook offices over there now too. So drawing a lot of people in because of that. All right, number two on my list is Kirkland, Washington. So uh, this is about 15 miles northeast of Seattle. Again, it's right next to Redmond, the one I just talked about. They are next door neighbors. So the commute is very similar, 20-ish minutes to Seattle. Uh, in no traffic times and 30, 45 in heavier times. Median home price in Kirkland is just about the same as Redmond. It's 1.35 million. Uh, Kirkland has a really, really cool downtown uh, waterfront area. So it's right on Lake Washington. Uh, so there are a ton of homes when you're on Lake Washington and then you go up the hillside. There are a ton of homes there on that hillside. There's a bunch of neighborhoods up there with great views of the water. You can see all the way across the water. Um, beautiful, beautiful views, beautiful homes. Because of that, there's a ton of new construction going on right close to the downtown area. They're tearing, there's a lot of uh, developers going through there, buying up older homes, tearing them down, putting in two to three to four million dollar homes with great views. So. Very, very popular place for new construction to be going up. In the downtown waterfront area, there are some great restaurants, Anthony's Homeport, which is a great seafood place, bunch of great restaurants down there on the main drive. Um, you've also got some shops, some local shops, clothing places, things like that. And then right on the waterfront, uh, you can go in there, you can go swimming a little bit. There's a marina right there with boats um, and grassy field to do some playing on. Uh, just a lot to do in Kirkland to spend the day on. Downtown, they usually have, like on the summer weekends, they oftentimes have different like art shows or car shows, things like that. They can go take the family to and enjoy. So uh, super walkable down there. Now, the tough part is if you don't live in walking distance, to downtown you live on a different side of Kirkland it is tough to find parking down there on a weekend it is very busy and there's not good parking options there's only a couple of parking lots they're pretty small and they fill up really fast so sometimes you have to park a little ways away in one of the neighborhoods on a side street and then walk down which you know we've done many times but it's kind of frustrating but it is what it is they, they just don't have any more room to put any more parking there now on the further north side of kirkland uh, you've got the totem lake area which has a bunch of shopping uh, there's like a ross and a whole foods and a nordstrom rack things like that a bunch of restaurants uh, fast food regular restaurants things like that um, and then you've got Tawanita Beach Park, which is right on uh, Lake Washington. So another popular place to go, to go swimming and, and just hang out on the beach, do that kind of stuff. And like I said, it's right on Lake Washington. So if you're somebody that has a boat, jet skis, things like that, Lake Washington is the largest lake around here. It's the most popular for people to go and do that kind of stuff, go water skiing, wakeboarding, uh, tubing behind the boat, things like that. So um, a lot of people around the Kirkland area that own boats and take advantage of the lake there. Now Kirkland is uh, home to some Google offices, so people that move over there for jobs. But like I said, it's right next to Bellevue and Redmond, which have a bunch of different tech companies. So again, another reason people so many people are moving to Kirkland because it is in close proximity um, to those uh, great companies, has great schools, 
beautiful homes, clean living, a lot of great stuff with Kirkland. All right, and let's go to the last one on my list. That's Maple Valley. So Maple Valley is about 25 miles southeast of Seattle. And this is number one in part because of the home prices. The median price here is 725,000. So a lot cheaper than these east side cities I'm talking about. This is the furthest south on my list. So in terms of a drive time to Seattle, it's about 35 minutes without traffic and then close to 45 to an hour in heavier traffic times. There are a ton of people moving to Maple Valley. There's a lot of new construction going on there. They have a newer school district called Tahoma School District. Um, so a lot of great things to offer with Maple Valley. Very clean place to live. They've got recreation to do down there, all the shopping and stuff that you need. It can, like I said, get a little bit tough with commuting. So this is again on the edge. If you're working in downtown Seattle, uh, living in Maple Valley is gonna kind of probably be on that edge for you of how far you're willing to commute for that on a daily basis. Um, but it is a great place to live. The home prices are still cheaper than most of the places on my list here. And it is rising very, very rapidly because so many people want to move to Maple Valley. Very, very desirable area. All right, well, that wraps up my list here of the top 10 suburbs people are moving to in the Seattle area. So like I said, if you've got questions about moving over here, you're planning to make a move, you need some help when you're coming over here, buying a home or whatnot, reach out to me here at my info on the screen. You can call, text, or email me anytime, and I'd be more than happy to help you out. But I appreciate you guys watching this video, and I hope to see you on one of the two videos up here, taking some more content about living in the greater Seattle area. Have a good one.